Hello, meteorology students. This is a quick video to show you how to take your data for the tornado pressure graph and create a graph that's actually going to work for you for the assignment. So what I have pulled up here is a Google Sheet. I've taken this information straight from the Google document assignment and I've copied and pasted it in here. Um, some of you might be familiar with this process, but there is one little twist that you might not be familiar with. So when you're ready to create your graph, you're going to click and select <clears throat> all of your data, including the headings up above, and then move up here to insert, and you'll come down to chart. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, Google Sheets does a pretty good job of suggesting what type of chart you might need. In this case, they've guessed it correct. They've got a line chart. We've got pressure in millibars over here on the y-axis. We have time in seconds down here along the x-axis. The problem is we've got all of this dead space in here, which makes our tornado look not particularly impressive, impressive right? We need, there's a big pressure drop, but we have all this area where there's no data. The pressure doesn't drop that low. And so we're going to, we're going to make one little change. All right. Your chart editor should have pulled up automatically over here on the right. And we're going to click on customize. When you click on customize, the, the, the axis we want to mess with is the vertical axis. So go ahead and choose a vertical axis, and it's going to give you some options. The point is, we want to actually remove all of this empty space on the graph. Not the time, but we want to remove all of this, all this area where there's never going to be any data point and any, any pressure area lower than 750. So as I've scrolled down over here and customized for the vertical axis, there's a minimum and a maximum setting. We only have to set the minimum setting. For this tornado, we don't have anything lower than 850. So I'm going to go ahead and put 850 in as the lowest, and it will then adjust your graph and take out all of the data, right? Now you could even clear out, look here, I don't have anything lower than 875. You could probably go 875, and it will um, adjust it even more. This now shows you the approaching tornado, the drop in pressure, how it stays low for a little while, and then rises back up as the tornado passes away. Okay, feel free to do this for both of your graphs. Just make sure that you don't set the minimum too close or past one of your data points because it will uh, it will make it disappear. So once you've got your graph where you want it to be, you can then do a Command C, right, to copy. And then when you take it over to your tornado pressure graph actual document, you can then do a Command V and post it. I recommend um, that you, you probably don't need to link it to the spreadsheet because you're not going to be changing your data. So just post it as unlinked. And then whatever happens to your data down the road, um, it won't mess with your graph here. And there you go, folks. That's how you create it. You'll do the same thing for the other graph as well.